What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory episode where today we're finally getting rid of this. The starter base is being removed and upgraded which means we're going to be mass deleting the whole copper setup and the whole iron setup as well. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to be lifting all these foundations up and putting it onto the world grid because when we placed this in episode one the world grid was not a thing. But as you know, with our recent builds, they are all on the world grid. So that will give us ease of access to actually match the foundations up to the buildings we've currently placed. For example, the whole steel setup. So the first job is I need to get some steel pipes, some steel beams, some concrete and some copper wire. This then are allowing us to unlock advanced steel production. So it needs the pipes, the rotors, the wire and the concrete unlocking Mark II miners, encased industrial beams, stators, mortars, automated wiring and heavy modular frames. So let's get that milestone sent off and get ready for the next stage. This allowing us to create our encased industrial beams we can add to the steel factory. Next up, now that we've unlocked the Miner Mark II, to place one of these, we need encased industrial beams. And for encased industrial beams, we need concrete and we also need steel beams. Steel beams is being created in the steel factory, but we need some concrete. This right here is one we're going to use. This is a pure concrete and all we need is a foundation, a Mark I Miner, also a building for the sole purpose just to put the miner indoors, which then leads to the towers that transport the limestone into the building to these three constructors producing our concrete, which have underclocked at 88.933% just so we get a target output of 13.34 and the reason for this is just so this right here can receive 40.02 preferably the closest number we can actually get to 40 so that's 40 80 120 um limestone coming in to actually create us well how much is it 13 i said 27 39 ish 40 ish 13.34 times by 3 is 40.2. Ah! How ironic is that? 40.2. Lol. <laughs> and next, what we want to do is because we have copper sheets and we also have Caterium wire being made, we're going to head into Caterium branch and then make that, unlock smart splitters, get you done. So then, well, we've got to wait for that now. Well, the next plan of action is to grab ourselves an assembler. Uh, and if we have a look at the encased industrial beam, it does require 24 steel beams per minute, which we're making 60 of. Um, and we also need 30 concrete, which we're making 40 of. So technically, we can only put one machine down right now. And we'll have an excess of concrete here. And we'll also have a excess of steel beams, which we'll put down here. Sort the smart splits out once they're done, which how long are they going to take? 4 minutes 20. And by the power of editing, you get to skip this time. And I've got to sit through it. So I'll see you in like a second. And there we go. We now have the smart splitters. Okay, so what I've done is I've put some mergers in front of these um, constructors. And I've got this one to face in this direction. That's because we want the belt to come this way. So what we're going to do is next, we're going to grab our assembler. We're going to place this down about here. Grab ourselves a smart splitter, um, which we're going to put right there. We are then going to grab a Mark 1 belt into there, into there, and then we're going to grab another smart splitter, face it on that entrance to go up and right as well, and we're going to get it up just like that and delete the bottom two. So that one's just going to be floating in midair for the time being, and then we're going to grab ourselves the logistics and a Mark 1 belt and just attach that inside the splitter. This then allowing us to bring this belt down, which would need to be a Mark 1, actually. Um, and I really should be putting uh, the storage down. So what we want is a storage container just here, uh, just at the side. And then another one, which we could actually put above, I suppose, just like that. And then we're going to grab ourselves a, another smart splitter. So we'll just copy paste this one line you up and then you're already coming out so what we can do is you're already coming out as well so actually yeah we need one there 
because we need it to divert inside here. Remove this center one. We're going to rem quickly remove this bottom one so I can add a conveyor stack pole here. And then remove the bottom one again and then put the splitter back on the bottom. Because what that's going to give us is the illusion that this splitter is not floating now. You see this? So we've just removed the bottom one and it looks like this now is holding this one up. That's the other reason I put that in the middle. Next, we're going to get ourselves a Mark 1 belt. Take that over to that splitter. Take that one over to that one. You into that storage. That one into that storage. That creating two separate lines. And now we need... In here, because this is facing this direction, we need left to go into uh, concrete. We need center to, to be overflow. And then this exactly the same. So left is going to be concrete. That is going to be overflow. And then we're going to go into our special, go into awesome sink and place one of these down. Um, I think we might need two actually. I think we might need two. It depends on how much steel beams. Maybe I might be able to merge. I might be able to merge. So we'll, 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 we'll try that. So what we're doing, we're just going to grab ourselves a merger and get that to aim directly inside of the... We're going to grab ourselves a lift now, which is going to be a Mark II to place there. Actually, it doesn't need to be a Mark II. It just needs to be a Mark I. So you into there. Grab ourselves a Mark 1 belt, which is traveling across there anyway. You into there. And then we need a Mark 2 here because we've got two Mark 1 that merging together. And then that's going to merge together. Um, so this is set to what it needs to be. Concrete going into the uh, assembler. Overflow going that way. So what that what this is going to do as a smart splitter. So that's set to overflow. So once this line is blocked and it can't go this way anymore, it's then going to go overflow onto this line. So this we're going to do the same. So left is going to be steel. Steel beams. Center is going to be overflow. And this top one is going to be exactly the same as well. So this one's going to be steel. This one's going to be overflow. And then that's just going to go along the merge with this line, go into the resource sink to remove anything. And we've got some backup storage. So the storage is going to be a priority first. So once the storage backs up, like once this concrete gets full up, it will then block up this belt, which will then send across here and go into the resource sink and be dumped. So that means everything can keep on moving, keep on producing, and we get tickets as well. So what we need to do now is power this up and this assembler. Now I've got it powered, I'm going to go into recipes and select in case industrial beams and bring in the concrete. Now I need to bring the um steel beams down which is going to come down from here on a mark one lift and it should about there i think i think i might actually quickly have to remove this merger um real quick just so i can put a uh, conveyor pole stack in here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to line that up there horizontally well yeah so it's facing this move it by two spaces here and then build it up twice, which then allow me to put a Mark 1 belt going from there to there to then into there. So that's the steel beams. And now I can put this merger back and make sure I'm facing it to that direction. Now I can just connect all these back up with the Mark 1 belts. And the reason I'm using Mark 1 belts is, as you know, my little rule of thumb I like to use is make sure that all my outputs are matching to what they are so this is only creating 13.34 this is creating 13.34 this is creating point 13.34 which is giving me 40.02 per minute across this which is less than 60 allow me to put a mark one belt down now that is done and we're currently making encased industrial beams but we need to put this into storage and we also need to send this to the sink which i think that's the reason i think we needed a second resource sink so i went and actually did that we're now bringing the pipes down and the encased industrial beams they're both going into a smart splitter going into the storage bins and then being overflowed being merged together and then sent to the resource sink to gain tickets now the time has come we've just completed the encased industrial beams and now we need to start removing all of this
So we need to move the copper, the screw setup, the assembler setup, concrete space elevator and top floor, the plates and the rods, and then the remaining foundation. And because we've just mass deleted all of that, all the excess plates, rods, copper, cables have all gone into this little storage here for my construction site. Okay, so I thought I hit the record button, but I did not. So I've just quickly unlocked the logistics Mark III, which gives us power storage, industrial storage containers, conveyor belts Mark III, conveyor lifts Mark III, and stackable pipeline. And for that, we just need the steel beam, steel pipes, and the concrete. So we've got that unlocked, and now we can, like, make more production and pull more for more miners and set up larger production lines. So I've just been rattling my brain, and what I'm thinking about doing is pulling all of this iron, the limestone, and copper from here. Then we're going to create a diagonal building that comes down to here, and then works its way over to the quartz production and it's actually going to match up to this because this is on the world grid then we're going to create a 12 meter gap underneath that floor which is going to be for our logistic buses which is then going to feed into our main starter base which is going to be located in this general location so now that we have a general idea and plan in my head that i want to gonna go for here let's start laying the framework down and lay down the foundation and there we go we have now set up the foundations we've hooked up the belts also removed the quartz and brought in the extra concrete as well and sent that to the bus line and then done exactly the same with all the iron and bringing the copper and the limestone up from the top shelf as well so everything is nice and clean and is in a direction i think i'm happy with and you can see that all the belts are going in one direction, which is going to go on an underfloor, which is going to go up into a spine inside the starter base and go onto their dedicated floors. Okay, there we go. I've just finished the floor uh, of the ground floor of the building, but underneath is actually our basement where we're going to be bringing in four lines, which is going to be uh, the iron, pure iron nodes on 270 Mark III belts. So these two right here are going to be our copper, these two are going to be our limestone, and these end two are going to be our quartz. So the plan is, I do on, uh, on stream, and I've done it for like the past two years, since since update two, I believe, since the lift started coming out, um, which was um, my modular builds. I do vertical builds, I never usually do horizontal builds. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look for this belt, we're going to come in by two, and this should then be where the first splitter should be going, which is down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to put nine smelters down. So we're going to put this here. We're going to grab ourselves a splitter, uh, not splitter, sorry, a uh, smelter. And we're going to put this like right here. And then we need to do nine. So we're going to put four on one side and five on the other. Or what I could do is I could overclock the end one, which is something I might do actually uh, to keep it nice and even and uh yeah, yeah, we're going to actually do that. We're going to actually do that. We're going to keep it nice and even. So what I'm going to do is this one, I'm going to put to iron ingots, but I'm going to put two of you in and overclock it. I'm going to put that to 60. So we don't need to put that extra uh, ninth one down. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some um, conveyor floor holes down. We're just going to put them into here. And we're going to put it onto every single one of them. Just like this. It keeps it nice and clean and uh, it's something different but then if we go underneath the ground we're then going to grab ourselves a nice splitter and we're going to place this right here with the input on my side then we can grab ourselves a lift actually let's just remove these jump down and then do this this will be easier and then we're going to get this and do it exactly the same on all of these and keep it nice and even and we should be putting four of them down now we're going to grab ourselves the lifts. So we're going to get some Mark 1 lifts, because they only require 30 per each one. And we're just going to change this, press R, and bring that in there, just like so. So we're going to do this for the rest of them. Now I've done that, I'm going to put the Mark 3 belt going straight through the center. Put the floor back down. Then grab ourselves the Mark 1 lifts on top, and then connect these to the splitters uh, not splitters, the smelters, just like this. So we need to do this for all of them. Once you've done that, I'm going to go into architecture and then go into frame walls and add some frame walls all the way along here, just like this. 
Then we're going to actually go up by another two, in fact. Bring that across there. And bring you across. Obviously, you're going to need steel beams for these. And that's how you unlock them in the awesome shop as well. You will need steel beams. Then we're going to grab ourselves a... Where are they? Where are they? They're at right the top, aren't they? Um, glass foundations. Here we go. Put these down and put this all across here and zoop that just there. Then we're going to use whatever foundation you're using on the ground and then just zoop this across here like this and just match it straight above your uh, smelters. Actually, are you a little bit... You're too thick. I've done the two meter ones and not the one meters. Make sure you use the one meters and not... Don't be an idiot like me. And we want to do it that way. There we go. Because when we put the constructors above this, they'll be nice and tidy. All right, so now we've got this. We do have this open spot here. So you can decide on what you want to do with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into walls. I'm then going to go into doors. And I'm going to change this to fix it. The concrete walls. And we're going to add a door here. And then also, I'm going to go into uh, the walls and go down to windows and add a window in there as well, just like this. And then I'm debating if we use windows here. That's something I've not decided yet. Uh, but what we should do now is we want to go into uh, logistics, uh, not logistics, sorry, architecture, grab ourselves some ladders and then head upstairs. And then we want to start putting down our constructors. So we're going to go into production, constructor, and then we're going to get this to face towards me. We want it bang in the center here, just like this. Just so then, when we come downstairs, we're going to grab ourselves a logistics, marks one. The reason it's a marks one is because this is outputting 30 per minute. Simple. We've talked about this before. And then we're going to bring this up and connect it straight to the constructor like that because it's a one-to-one -one ratio so we're going to do that with all of them we're going to put constructors on the, the top shelf and then connect them with the belts and there you go i've now added the constructors on top and added the lifts but you'll notice some things different i've just readjusted the the door here because uh for those that know they'll uh, they probably would have shouted at me going oh you can't put that door i'll explain to the people that's never seen me do these designs before uh, in a second but what i've also done is i've got some lights inside and i placed them just here so what's going to happen is they're now coming through just here to shine a light down here once we get the power up and we can give it our i think we're going to i think i think we're going to stick with the orange all the way through the build uh, a lot of people is uh, people's were actually complimenting that build and uh that's why we did the breakdown video as well so now we've got these in here and i did add a window across here but if you notice i've left the framework as well to kind of give it a bit more texture a bit more detail and a bit more depth um, also, I've done here, where we put the lifts, I've made these to window walls with the framework going in as well to keep it very industrial-like and not just keeping a plain, simple wall because I don't like being simple, all right? Uh, I like to do my big builds, complex builds, and all that kind of good stuff. So we've left this as a double window. What we do need to do now is head upstairs. We now need to grab ourselves some mergers, logistics, grab ourselves some uh, mergers, and then just have this facing towards me. So we're going to do this, 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 and this. Got myself some Mark 1 belts. And then just go all the way along here. Like this. And then, I believe, because we're sending uh, 20 outputs per minute. 2, 4, 6, 8. We're going to send in 160. Which does mean we do need to put a Mark 3 belt all the way in the middle. Actually... No, it's not 160, it's 180, because we do need to overclock this one as well. Because, as you know, downstairs, wait, um, that one, add you in there, put you to 200%, because this one down here, which we've overclocking, is creating, uh, we'll be creating 60 per minute, right? So that's going to create 60 per minute. So that's why we've overclocked that. Because we had to, did have to add a 9 one, right? So now we've done that. We're good to go, and I do need to get the power. So what I normally do with the power here, I normally grab this, and I like to do something that's a little clean, and just bring this uh, normally to about the edge here, which does go through the machine like that on these builds, uh, through the f uh, machine, uh, through the uh, concrete foundation. 
Uh, and we're going to do this with all of them. So we're going to take this all the way around and then connect them all up and link them together. Once I've connected the cables up here, well, just, just the, uh, the four and the four on the opposite side, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into my power. Maybe I should turn my torch on. That will help, doesn't it? Um, connect a double wall outlet there and then connect you up. You up to that. And then we're going to do the same here. We're going to put double mark wall outlets just here on these. Like this. We're going to grab our wire and connect you to there. This then sending the power on the inside for us to control that inside. Um, and that side's done. And then what we'll do is on the inside, we'll come inside here. We'll link these up just like this. And then we're also going to grab this one, bring this up to here, and then link you to that one. So now the constructors are now linked to the smelters. We just need to find a central power. So we need to do this on this side. Okay, so I've added a central one there, which is connected to this one. Um, and then I'm going to, um, I think what might be easier would be to grab this one here, bring this up to there, and then connect you to that output so now we have a central uh power uh, node so we're gonna go underneath the floor here and then what i'm gonna do is because that's connected to the we're gonna grab a power line from you if it wants to grab and then we're just gonna attach it to the uh no actually let's put the floor back then i want to do this a little bit awkward grab you and then bring you to this floor and pull you in by one that should then go down in a straight line can i get up here i don't think i can and yep there it is straight vertical i don't mind this sort of thing it's a cable thing it doesn't need a connector there that's uh, my little rule of thumb i don't i don't mind cables doing that as long as they're neat, neat and tidy for me um and not going in diagonally it's a that's a little bit weird unless it's an aesthetic purpose um and it looks good uh yeah i don't mind that um, now we've done all that, that is all connected up. All we need to do now is um, set up the recipes and bring in the iron and we can get this up and running. But what I do need to do first, actually, because I nearly forgot, we need to add the outputs, um, which I need to grab this Mark III belt here, bring you to the edge. We're going to go into logistics and we're going to go into a conveyor hole and we're going to put that straight there. Grab ourselves the Mark III and bring you up. Actually, can I make you closer? Can I put you closer? Will it allow me? Or will you be my good friend if I was to put you there? How about that? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. The reason I'm going from top to the bottom is because if I was to put a lift from the bottom here to the direction I want to go, have you noticed the spine of the lift now is out from the wall? Okay. But if we go from top to bottom... It will then go against the wall and be a lot cleaner right and now we've got the lift coming down here instead of it protruding away from the wall it's nice and clean then i think i've got enough room underneath here we do i'm going to grab myself an organization go into storage container and we're just going to put one storage bin down here which i think there will do fine grab myself logistics a mark three belt bring you and attach you into there now we've kept the uh, if the iron needs to go anywhere else it, which it will do for the reinforced plates it's then on the logistic and bus uh, floor uh, and everything's neat and tidy so a lot of people always ask me as well is why do i do these kind of designs one is because they look cool two is because they are efficient right so if i was to upgrade my belts um so for example if we were to unlock mark four belts all i need to do is upgrade this belt here which will be a uh mark three going to a mark four that means 480 going in and then we we'll just all we need to do is just double everything we have well not really double because mark three offsets to 270 right but we'll have to put 16 machines down because if we go into here and do a 480 divided by 30 that is 16 machines all right so all we need to do is just everything we've got here you just double it, move this storage up as well, bring whatever we've got over here um, out and just build along and make them bigger and bigger. Like if any of you have actually been in my Twitch stream, link in the description, by the way, come on over, give me a click, give me a follow, quick plug. 
lol. Um, <laughs> um, you actually see we've got some pretty large ones. Um, and these will keep extending. So this is a plates one. And as you know, with the rods one, which we're going to do here, um, they are a little bit different because they're a one to two ratio, right? So I will get it all set up and I'll give you a quick, quick brief. So yeah, let's get the rest of this floor complete. We're going to do another one of these uh, over here. And we're going to get two rod ones in the middle as well okay so you know how i how i was just about to you know give you a quick little brief of what we was going to do and i was going to build a rod machine and i was going to build another plate one on that same floor well i didn't do that i kind of built two floors i built an extra seven of the engines and i also built some walls and some windows and and some other stuff just check this out we have it that is half or part of the starter base we finally got some things completed them small buildings you can see on the side are just housing the miners that's pulling in all the ore and then we have the main structure itself i will do a dedicated video on this and we'll go through some into more detail on everything that we did uh, and yeah that's gonna be it for this episode so thank you so much for watching we got a lot of done and i spent 26 hours on this build 26 hours so again thank you so much for watching and as always keep smiling all these names you can see right here as well have recently clicked that join button next to the subscribe to support me financially as a full-time content creator. If nobody knows, I do this as a full-time job, which is live streaming and YouTube content creation as well. So thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.